Today we're going to find out just how well or not well the modified compensator has done after 18, roughly 1800 miles on it uh, at this point. And then I will be replacing it today with a Screamin' Eagle unit because I got a uh, stator rotor with the magnets complete uh, from eBay. And so I'll be putting that in today. And I guess that'll end the experiment of the modified compensator spring pack. All right, guys, I've got the Hayden tensioner off and I hope you can see the stator rotor in behind here that's attached through splines through the, to the crankshaft just so I can show you that as I turn this sprocket out here, the stator rotor is moving with it. So it still has plenty of tension on it to keep the compensator from clunking around and sliding back and forth unnecessarily, especially on startup. So that's why I've been having good luck with starting the bike and not having it thrash around after adding that fifth spring washer to the pack up against the cam that's inside the compensator. But it's time for that to come out, out with the old, in with the new. I'm gonna go scream an eagle today and hopefully that's the way the bike's gonna stay. It was a good experiment, I thought, for. 1800 miles including a 230 mile ride yesterday which included going up Cadillac Mountain in Bar Harbor which is not huge it's uh it's a windy twisty uphill and downhill puts a lot of stress on the compensator both going uphill and slowing the bike down coming downhill uh but it uh handled that just fine and, and here it is today still with uh, with enough tension pushed against that cam that it almost makes this as one piece at, at idle like this when it's just uh, static. And then it still has enough give in it to compensate for the pulses of the motor when the motor is running. So I guess it was a success, but how much longer would it last? I don't know. That's a good question. All right, I've got the main bolt out. Time to see what's in here, huh? See, I think I have to remove this inner piece first. Make it come apart a little easier. Okay. Here's the inside of the sprocket and the cams inside. You can see the shiny parts where the inner cam, which is this piece, has been interfacing with it. And they're shiny, but they're not completely smooth if you look. And that's why, now let's remove this inner cam and see the rounded parts here are, are shiny too on these points, okay? So where the two of these ride against each other, you hear that? It's, it's just the nature of the beast. And once you put this cover on, on the primary, it muffles it a little bit, so it changes that sound into a, a more hollow sound. And you might think, oh, my compensator's going bad. Well, it's just these two pieces sliding against each other that are uh, absorbing the shocks of the engine pulses by pushing against these springs in the spring pack. So that's the noise. It's, it's doing its job when it's, when it's making that noise. And the spring pack itself now I can see, let's wipe this right here. Yeah, a little, there's a little grit. And I did notice a little bit on the plug when I took it out on the magnet on the plug, there was a little bit of a fine particle that had accumulated. There's still some lube inside here. That's a good sign. Time to slide this piece out and put the new one in. And I've already mentioned before, I've ground down with a Dremel tool and a sandpaper drum bit. Uh, or actually, I think it was uh, for a grinding, a grinding bit. And I ground away a little bit of this aluminum and I was surprised at how little, how actually little up to about here 
how little amount of aluminum had to be taken away for this to fit out through here. So here goes, the magnets are gonna pull and work against you, of course, but if you take your time, here it comes. There it goes. And through trial and error, when I got it this far off the bike and it would bind, I could see in the aluminum here where this metal was coming up against the aluminum so that I knew, oh, I need to grind down that spot there just a little bit more and maybe this spot up here a little bit more. And then I'd try it again. But eventually I got it so that where it just comes right out like that. No issues there. No weird stress marks or anything on the compensator a stator rotor itself, uh, you can't quite see, but I've got the four original springs plus one more facing out, so it's curved back like that. Uh, it's facing out on the outside here. So I've got five spring washers in there instead of the factory four, uh, which meant that this fifth one came up against this cam sprocket here, and with it facing out, uh, the cone shape facing out, words um, it came against this this lip here see and you can see the shiny parts maybe on this cam P parts of it that are shiny that's where it came into contact with this spring in here so it actually rode two of these rode together pretty well overall well one thing's for sure I could have a huge yard sale or a sale on eBay maybe of all the used compensator parts that I've accumulated from both the original parts to this 2009 Road King and ones that I've purchased online. I'm going ahead and wiping everything down thoroughly inside to get as much of any grit that may have been resting in these places. I've cleaned out the rest of it. Okay, I've gone ahead and cleaned up the replacement stator rotor excellent condition, uh, excellent shipping, wrapped in bubble wrap and in a box with nothing else in it. it says it's part number, I don't know, 30041-03, possibly. But I don't know if this is the date of manufacture, October 11th, 2011. It came off a 2012 motorcycle on the listing online. So carefully lining the splines up with the crankshaft and I'm going to try to slide this on without too much incidence here. It's a little bit thicker than the original one so see there's not as much play or looseness around the edge like there was with the other one but if I take my time here and line it up proper. There it goes. It is rubbing a little bit somewhere. I can feel it down bottom here. On this side, here it goes. Okay, we don't want it to just slide on in there. So luckily it's got these grooves on the outside. Maybe I can use them to slow down it's wanting to slide right in quick. And there it goes, there it goes, you heard it. You heard it click when it sat down onto the end of the crankshaft there. So that's all there is to putting that in place. All right, well, with the stator rotor in there, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the Screamin' Eagle parts. All right. Because it's me, I can't always go by the book. I can't put it back together by the book. So when I installed the Screaming Eagle compensator, we've got the outside sprockets, we've got the ramp cam piece in here that goes on to the shaft. We've got the thrust washer right here, that thin, small washer in the front. Two medium spring washers, the Belleville Springs, and two large Belleville Springs. And of course the motor would be over here with, the, with actually this, the uh, stator rotor would be over here uh, off to the side. Okay, we'll move our, our graphic 
over here. Um, so what I did is I eliminated the thrust washer. So the cam piece goes right directly up against the medium spring washer, the medium Belleville washer. And since I had a spare one, I had a spare medium and large, I took the medium and I put it right here, piggybacked with this inner one, okay? So I've got two medium Belleville spring washers back to back on this side. Just one over here because I figure that'll give this more flex up against the cam piece so that it can kind of straighten out against the back of the cam piece under pressure, become a little bit flatter. These two will resist. This one, the large one, will uh, allow it to compress. And the same thing over here, allow that one to compress. So these will provide a little more resistance. And I already measured this in a previous video and found out that with the uh, thrust washer and the regular setup, it's a certain height from the uh, from the stator rotor and by removing the thrust washer and adding a single uh, Belleville medium size washer it's still the same measurement from the stator rotor to the back of the cam so it doesn't add any more thickness than what it already had from the factory with the thrust washer but it does add a little more rigidity to this inner spring washer so I'm hoping this is going to hold up for years and years and years until the bike just can't run anymore that's the plan. So that's what I'm rolling with right now. I've already ridden it uh, about 70, 80 miles, and it seems to be working fine. You'd never know it. You'd never know I changed it out and took out the thrust washer and put in this extra medium washer back here with these two back to back. I don't think driving it, you would feel it and go, oh yeah, you must have swapped something out because the compensator, I can feel some engine pulses. I don't think that's the, the case. So that's what I'm running with. That's what it looks like. You knew I couldn't get away with uh, putting it back together without changing something to the setup. That's what I changed. And now you know. So happy wrenching on your ride. Ride safe out there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you've subscribed, I really appreciate that too. Uh, you can give it a thumbs up. You can give it a thumbs down, I suppose, too. Uh, and you can comment away down below what kind of experiences have you had with these compensators, both the, the old style and the Screaming Eagle style.